Welcome back to section three of chapter two. In this section, we're going to be learning about the chain rule. Now the chain rule, unlike the power rule, isn't how we find the derivative of a specific type of function. Rather, it's a process that we use almost all the time with almost everything because it's, we use it when we have composite functions, when we have a function inside of another function. Um, example, in the next section, we're gonna look at sine of x, and that's great for sine of x, but what if we have sine of two x? Then we would have to use the chain rule. Um, we're going to look to see how we can use the chain rule today with power functions um, that we were using the power rule on because that's what we know how to do. We will continue to use the chain rule pretty much for everything that we're finding the derivative of throughout the rest of the year. So to look at it, what is the chain rule? The chain rule says that if we have functions f and g, which are both differentiable, that is important. If it's not differentiable, then it doesn't work. Um, and the composite function given by f equals f of g, or I know my preferred notation would be f of x equals f of g of x. We have an outside function, we have an inside function. The derivative, we're going to take the derivative of the outside function of the inside function, the inside function stays the same, times the derivative of the inside function. Um, in Leibniz's notation, it looks like this down here, we have dy over dx. That's going to be dy over du times du over dx. And that's going to be um, with u substitution, which we'll actually take a look at here in the first example. So the first example we're doing, um, we're just going to do a very basic one. We're going to look at f of x equals x squared plus 7 squared. So if we just had something squared, we can do that with the power rule. The problem is we we have, what, what do we do with that something? So with u substitution, this is where the, the du stuff comes in with Leibniz's formula or his notation. We're gonna say, you know, let u equal the inside stuff, x squared plus seven. That means we could rewrite our function, f of x equals u squared. Well, that's easy. We can find the derivative of that. f prime of x equals 2u, but then times the derivative of u with respect to x, du over dx. That's this piece right here. This first one was the derivative of y with respect to u. That was 2u times the derivative of u with respect to x. And so that is going to be the derivative of this guy. We can go du over dx equals 2x, right? It's just using power rule. Now we can substitute this in for du over dx and put u back in. So f prime of x equals two times u, which was x squared plus seven times du over dx, which is two x. In this case, we can multiply it out pretty easily as well. f prime of x equals, we have four x times x squared is four x cubed plus four x times seven. 28x. So a couple questions you probably have at this point is one, do you always have to replace stuff with you? No, not at all. Um, when you're first starting out, sometimes it's nice so that you can deal with that something. Um, and it's a good skill to have when you get to those the harder problems that we will get to at some point this year. But honestly, I would have done this one without substituting for you. And we'll see how that works um, in just a minute as well. Uh, the other question you might have is, well, this is super easy. Why can't I just multiply it out and then use the power rule? 
In this case, you could. In fact, I chose that because that's the next thing we're going to do. That way we can see that, hey, we're going to get the same thing. But sometimes either it's um, it's going to be too big you don't want to, or um, it's going to be something where you can't just multiply it out. We're going to see examples of both of those. Um, but first, let it, let's multiply this one out. So we could multiply this out. We get f of x equals x squared plus 7, not x to the fourth plus 7 squared. It's x squared times x squared is x to the fourth plus 7x squared plus another 7x squared is going to be plus 14x squared plus 49. And now using the power rule here, we get the derivative equals 4x cubed plus 28x, and the 49 is a constant, so it goes away. So notice in both cases, we did get the same answer, which is good. It is good that we got the same answer. Um, so how about a case where we wouldn't want to have to multiply it out? So if we want to look at another one, f of x equals x to the fifth minus 5x cubed plus 3x squared plus 4x minus 1 to the seventh. So in this case, we don't want to multiply this out. That would be a pain. Let's just leave it. It would be a pain. Is it possible? Could we if we really, really had to? Yes, we could, but it would probably take a while and it would be a logistical nightmare. So instead, we're going to use the chain rule. So the derivative, what we have here is we have something to the seventh. This is where we'd replace it with u. We don't need to replace it with u, as I'm showing you that. So we have something to the seventh. What's the derivative of something to the seventh? It's going to be the seven times that something to the sixth power. So that something is x to the fifth minus 5x cubed plus 3x squared plus 4x minus 1. Notice that I did not take the derivative at that point. Inside of this function does not change. We then multiply by the derivative of the inside. x to the fifth is 5x to the fourth minus 5x cubed is minus 15x squared plus 6x plus 4. Right, so we have something to the sixth is going to be seven. Or I mean, something to the seventh is going to be seven times something to the sixth times the derivative of whatever, of whatever that something is. Right, so now we can distribute this something to the sixth. No, I'm kidding. Leave it like that. Don't just don't distribute this. Leave it like that. Um, honestly, like on the AP test you've already done the calculus. This is the answer. If you were to distribute this, you could get it right, but most likely you're going to make a mistake somewhere in the process, and that would cause you to lose points. Also, it's going to take a lot of time. You don't have that much extra time on those tests. So leave it like that. The calculus has been done. Um, another problem that we could use uh, power the chain rule for something like f of x equals 1 over x squared plus 2. We could rewrite this as x squared x squared plus 2 to the negative first power. And now it's a chain rule problem. We have something to the negative first. What's the derivative of something to the negative first? It's going to be negative 1 times that something to the negative 2 times the derivative of that something. The derivative of x squared is 2x, and 2 is a constant, so that doesn't move. This one we could simplify just a little bit. 
equals, so it's a negative 2x, and then it's over x squared plus 2. Uh, come on, pen, work. My pen is not working. That's annoying. It will not put the plus. There we go. X squared plus 2 squared. Technology. Um, honestly, between these two last answers, either one of them would work. Um, in this case, it was pretty easy to get to this last final answer. Sometimes it'll be bigger and that won't be quite as easy to do, um, but really either way works. But this is one where we couldn't multiply it out. We have to use the chain rule on this problem. Same thing with the next one. We're going to have f of x equals the square root of 4x minus 3. So we have the square root of something. Remember, that's that can be written as 4x minus 3. I think I might need to change the batteries in my pen to the 1 half. So we now have something to a power. So the derivative f prime of x. This is frustrating. f prime of x is going to be 1 half times that same something for x minus 3 to the negative 1 half times the derivative of 4x minus 3, which is 4. This one, again, we could simplify. We could leave. I would multiply the 1 half and 4, but you could leave it like that. Or f prime of x is 1 half times 4 is just 2. Something to the negative 1 half is going to be over the square root of 4x minus 3. Sorry for the handwriting on this one. So we have f prime of x equals 2 over the square root of 4x minus 3. Um, and so that's basic chain rule. Now it's possible to use the chain rule more than once in a single question. If we have some a function inside of a function inside of another function, like we could be using the chain rule a whole bunch of times. Um, and that'll come out more when we have a lot more functions to deal with, when we have more trig functions, when we have exponential and logarithmic functions and things like that. But we could do it on, a, on questions that we have now as well. Something like f of x equals 1 over the square root of 3x squared minus 1 plus 10. And so we have 1 over something. So that would be something to the negative first power. Specifically, that would be the square root of 3x squared minus 1 plus 10 to the negative first power. So find the derivative of that is going to be negative 1. So negative, and then that mess square root 3x squared minus 1 plus 10 to negative second power times the derivative of what's inside. The derivative of what's inside, we're going to have a square root of something. That's going to be 1 half times the something 3x squared minus 1 to the negative 1 half times the inside of that, the derivative of 3x squared minus 1, it's going to be 6x. And then the plus 10, 
that's just a constant, so it goes away. So this would be a good case where rewriting it from here isn't necessarily going to be very helpful. Um, we're going to have 1 over all this stuff squared, and then a square root and a 6. I mean, we could rewrite this if we really wanted to. Um, we have on top, we have a 1 half times 6x, so that would be a 3x, and the negative in front, so that would be a negative 3x over the square root of 3x squared minus 1 plus 10 squared times the square root of 3x squared minus 1. So, I mean, we could rewrite it like that, but that it doesn't really help, and it is only going to get worse from there as we move on. Um, so leaving it leaving it like that is perfectly fine, too. So a chain rule. We have a function inside of a function. You do the derivative of the outside function of the inside function. That does not change. And then you multiply by the derivative of the inside function. One of the biggest mistakes is people will do the derivative of the outside, and they'll put the derivative of the inside inside of it. The inside doesn't change. Multiply the derivative to the end. So that's what this section is. Um, it's, it's just one skill over and over and over again. It's just chain rule. Um, next time, we'll add in some sine and cosine functions. Until then, keep working problems, keep asking questions, and as always, happy mathing.